My seed packets are laid out where they're going to grow. My survival garden beds are also ready. So it's time to get seeds in the ground. Now the process is pretty simple. It's just putting a seed in soil. But of course, there are many other factors involved to make sure you have a successful harvest. Join me today as I show you how I sow my survival garden seeds. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and this is one of my favorite gardening days of the year when I can actually get the seeds in the ground. In my short Colorado growing season, my vegetable garden for summer typically isn't sown until very late in spring. And so I finally have a nice sunny day, the weather is warming, and it's time for these plants to start growing. But even though the seeds aren't going in until now, I've been preparing these beds for months. I've added organic matter to the soil to really start boosting the soil life. All of those microbes that are going to make the nutrients in the soil available to the plants need to be grown. It needs to be part of your gardening thought. Get the soil ready before the seeds go in the ground. And because that life needs water, I've been watering these beds for weeks, weeks before I start sowing the seeds. So my soil is alive, the soil is moist, and now they're ready for the seeds to be put in and begin germinating. Another thing to make the process easier is that I've made plant tags for all of these seed packets. So it becomes pretty easy and pretty fast. I'll put the seeds in, I'll put a plant tag in, and I'll just move right on down the line. As I did an inventory on the seeds that I had, I decided to put eggplant on this end of this garden bed. Now, reading the seed packet, it suggests that I start the seeds 8 to 12 weeks before the last frost. You may have a long enough growing season that you can direct sow your eggplant seeds and get a good harvest. But because my season is so short, I did exactly this. I started eggplant seeds indoors about 10 to 12 weeks ago. And so, to begin this process and to anchor this bed, I'm actually going to put these transplants in the ground. The spacing, as recommended on the seed package, is about two to three feet apart. I like to grow a little bit closer than that, and if I need to trellis, I'll put a trellis up. So for these plants, I just dig a small hole, lay the plant in, and move the soil around it. The plant is put in at the same level in the bed as it was growing in the pot. With seeds or with plants, you need to think about the mature size of the plant. And so the spacing, in this case, about two feet apart, though I will stagger one right here, should be ample for these plants. You need to think about the edge of your bed because while I'm thinking about the spacing between the plants, I'm also thinking about the spacing between the plant and the edge of the bed. You don't want to put your seeds or plants so close to the side of the bed that that will interfere with their growth. And so I'll continue planting these just as I did with the other. A hole, a plant, soil around it, and a plant tag. The easiest way to deal with the spacing of the seeds in a bed is to grow the entire bed using the same seed, and then everything is exact. But I don't want an entire bed of eggplant. I want some other plants like this zucchini. And this is the one that's going to be sown next to the eggplant. So not only do I have to think about how big the eggplant is going to grow, I need to think about the mature size of the zucchini as well. And this seed package says that I should plant in hills 18 to 24 inches apart. So that's a guideline. I'll go ahead and just scribe a shallow line 
about 18 inches away from the eggplant, and this is where I'm going to put my zucchini seeds. Now, the idea of planting in a hill is kind of the old way, when you have a wide open garden space and you're growing a lot of plants. I'm just growing a couple zucchini in this bed, so that's why I'm just going to put in a few seeds. It also tells me that I can thin the seedlings to two to three plants per mound. Well, that means that I can actually grow plants closer together than the initial hill concept implies. I know how big zucchinis get, and I know how much fruit they give, so I'm going to put in three zucchini plants in this row. The packet tells me that the planting depth is one inch, and so I'm going to go ahead and lay out two seeds in the three locations that I'm planning to have a plant. The reason for two seeds is just to make sure that we have a plant growing in each of these locations. It's just a backup for germination. And I can go ahead and just use my finger knowing that my first knuckle is about an inch and push one of these seeds down to that knuckle. This seed is now sown one inch deep. Or I can make a hole ahead of time and then just drop the seed in and cover it with soil. If you have a dibble, a stick, you can do the same thing, but I find it just as easy to push a seed in or drop a seed in using my finger as a dibble. And so in no time at all, these seeds are in the ground. I've got my plant tag all ready to go and I'll put it to line up with this row and the zucchini is done. Next, I'm going to do the beets. Now, the beets can grow much closer together, but I still need to allow room for how big the zucchini plant is going to get. So, I can do this with my finger as well, instead of the trowel. I can go ahead and scribe a light line of where the beet seeds are going to go, and I look at the planting depth. In this case, it's going to be half an inch. So, on this side of the bed, make this line a little bit deeper, about half an inch deep, and now I'll go ahead and sow these bead seeds. The final spacing of these plants are going to be about two to four inches apart. And so, with the idea of overseeding, putting in seeds a little bit closer than that two to four inches, and then coming back and removing or thinning some of those plants later on, I just drop the seeds into this trench about half an inch deep and had started this row. As with the zucchini, I could also just drop the seeds on the surface and then come back and push them about half an inch into the soil. I don't like to do this as much because some of these seeds, after you put them on the soil, can be hard to see. And then moving over about four inches, this time I'll use a trowel, I'll dig a trench about half an inch deep, take these seeds, lay them in the bottom of the trench, and then cover it over. So you can see how fast this goes if you have this assembly line set up and ready. With my four feet wide beds, it is a bit of a stretch to try to do everything from one side. So I don't mind bouncing back and forth. In this second row, I'll just drop the seeds in, cover them up with soil, and now my beets are planted with a plant tag. Now, I don't put a plant tag on every single row. I know I have two rows of beets, so I'll put the plant tag in the row closest to the next type of plant that I'm going to put in. In this case, it's the turnip. If I don't use all of my seeds, well, I'll put them back into the seed packet. And these can be saved and used either in a fall garden or next year for when I choose to grow these beets again. These turnips 
we'll end up being about three to six inches apart. So I'll go ahead and level out my soil a little bit in this area. I'll come over about four inches from the beets. Now I know I'm doing two rows, so I can go ahead and stay on this side of the bed to put in these two rows that are going to end up being the turnips. And then go ahead and sow the seeds the same way in each of these, going pretty quickly, covering up with soil. Now I'm leaving the edge of the trench so I know where to make the lines on the other side. Put my plant tag in and now I can go over and finish the turnips. And so with these lines already identified, now it's just a simple matter of extending them to this side of the bed, taking these turnip seeds, filling in the trench where there weren't any before, and this another couple rows of plants all ready to go. Before I do the spinach and the lettuce and the carrots, I'm going to level and slightly rough up the surface of the soil. That's because these little seeds, like the lettuce and the carrots, are only sown about a quarter inch deep. Not deep at all. And so to try to take your finger or a trowel and make a trench a quarter inch deep is hard to do. Instead, with loose soil, I'll go ahead and take these lettuce seeds. I'll put the plant tag in first so that I know the general area that I'm going to sow. And then I will broadcast these seeds lightly in this area. And then, because the soil is already loose, I can just take some from the sides and just lightly cover this area that's going to be the lettuce. And then I'll do the same thing with these carrot seeds. Another small seed again. They're going to be thinned just a couple inches apart, but I can sow these light seeds all over this area. Put my plant tag in. Lightly cover these seeds with soil. And now I have carrots and lettuce that will pop up in this area. And then after the seedlings are growing, I'll come back and thin out to get the proper spacing. Now, this does waste some seed, but usually in these seed packages, you have plenty of seeds left over, even after knowing a lot of these are gonna be pulled out of the ground. Now, I like nice, neat rows, but if you want to try to get as many plants as possible in a bed, try something like this with radish. These champion radishes, according to the seed packet, should be ready to harvest in about 25 days. Now, the carrots may take a week or two to just germinate, so I can go ahead and sprinkle some of these radish seeds in the same area where I put the carrots, lightly cover them as well. Maybe we'll throw in some with the lettuce as well. And so I'll have plants growing here. There'll be radishes. I'll go ahead and harvest those radishes. And then for the rest of the season, the carrots will be growing in that space. Another consideration when it comes to the spacing and the timing and the reason you're growing these plants comes into play with something like this kale. Now, kale is a biennial plant, so all of the rest of these plants so far, with the exception of the carrots, you should be able to allow to go to seed and then save the seed at the end of the season. But the carrots and the kale, you need to leave in the ground over the winter. So that's one reason why I put the carrots at this end of the bed and why I'm finishing up with kale at the very end of the bed. Because if I want to save kale seeds for future gardens, 
I'll need to not harvest all of the kale and let the plants grow and give me seed next year. I also interspersed a few herb seeds like cilantro at intervals around the bed. And so now with all the seeds in place, it's time to water them in. Even though I began with moist soil, the process of roughing it up will dry it out pretty quickly. So I'll give it a pretty good soaking so that the soil rests around all of these seeds. I'll avoid spraying directly on the leaves of the eggplants. They're still young. I don't want to break them. And the seeds are in the ground. They now have water and warmth from the sun, and they should be germinating pretty quickly. I'm expecting a lot of hot, dry, windy days ahead, so this soil will dry out pretty quickly. At this point, I'll go ahead and put a light layer of dried grass clippings that I saved from last year to cover the soil and help keep it from drying out so quickly. Just a light enough layer that these young seedlings will have no problem pushing through. With the light mulch in place, I'll water in the mulch to help it stay in position. And from this point on, the soil needs to stay consistently moist. Remember, some of these seeds are very close to the surface, so we can't allow the soil to dry out at all. And another reason I like using this light layer of grass clippings, if I see it start to blow around, well, that tells me that that top surface is drying out because these moist grass clippings will stay in place. I'm using the same process for the rest of my seeds in the rest of my survival garden beds and for the rest of my garden in general. But there is always something else you need to think about. And in the case of this bed where I'm going to put melons, the seed packet specifically says, sow the melon seeds when the soil temperatures have reached 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I have a soil thermometer and it's only measuring 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So most of the seeds can go in today, but I need to make sure that the soil warms up more before I put the melon seeds in. Hopefully just a few days because I have hot temperatures in the forecast. But for best germination, I need warm soil. So in this case, patience will pay off. If I put the seeds in too early, they probably won't germinate. They may, might actually start rotting before they can germinate. So I'll wait for these and put in all of the other seeds that I can. If you want to learn more about this entire process and how to grow plants, well, watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.